Now, so uh, how do you apply and affect this change? Because I've worked in uh, organizations where uh, there was change that came so abruptly and it was applied uh, almost uh, wholesale. And it was very, very disruptive, not just that, but uh, it brought a lot of uh, bad feedback. So we have to prepare the stage by asking some problem questions. Those are now thought provoking questions and engaging all the stakeholders in the process because they have to own that process. If the stakeholders own the process, when you bring your change, it becomes, it's going to really move uh, quickly and more successfully because at the end, if it doesn't go where well, everybody owns up to it. If it goes where well, they own up to it. So change is good when it's gradual. So you make it incremental and instrumental. And when you want to be a change agent, you have to be methodic and a team player. Then uh, why do you have to make change? It's not just making a change for change sake. Take an example where you just uh, join a new organization and you are made probably uh, an agile delivery lead or scrum master, and you are you now leading those teams and guiding them, you, you want to make sure that you are making that difference by challenging what the status quo is. And because this is consequential, so you, you are going to sell the benefits. That is benefit, benefit, benefit to all the stakeholders. So when you do that, um, you also foresee any disruptions that may come along the way, and that's why you're going to have a, a plan B. Uh, that's why I said here um, that I wrote a poem, Hitches and Glitches, uh, Roll Out, Back Out, Roll Back. I, I wrote that poem when, in a, when I was leading, at that time I was leading four teams, four scrum teams. It was, uh, it was such a... <laughs> A, great, a big load. And one of those teams was 28 me members, a scrum team, uh, basically three teams in one. So uh, we had worked on a project and this was deployed into production and it didn't go well. So we had to back out because we had a plan B. If it, did, it didn't go well because it was a project that was very new and very uh, experimental. So we had to back out identify the glaciers that were there and stitch them and then we roll it back and everything was successful. It was after that experience that I wrote the poem Hitches and Glitches. You can find it on my, um, on my LinkedIn page. Uh, it, holds, it handles a lot of stuff there. So when you are making that change, you have to measure your progress. Then you redress the process and buckle up any positive outcomes that may come from there. So uh, you are redressing your, the process because along the way, not everything that you said from the beginning may go the way that, uh, that you plan from the beginning. That's why you assess and redress. Now, from change, uh, let's go to organizational culture. What I call culture, nature, and nurture. So, uh, being very poetic, I, I usually would choose words that are kind of they put some imagery in your mind so that it helps you to be able to, you know, to uh, really carry out the project that you are working on and also help people to remember. So not two organizations are the same, even in the same industry. And if you have worked in more than uh, one industry, you're going to realize in the same capacity, you're going to realize that they are not the same because each organization is set up in a certain way. That will be their nature. And when they are set, they become, that it becomes their way of life because that is what they know. That's what I call culture. And then they want to grow. They want to develop that culture, which is now nurturing it. That's why organization, culture, and nature are nurture. Now, agile has to be agile, thus adapted and responsive to stimulus. You could even make, make it stimuli because it's not just one, it could be multiple. So if we are in the agile environment where we're adapting, we have to be ready to embrace the change. 
And so that is why Agile is not a one size fit all. So you look at your organization, master what it is, the needs of your organization, and then tell Agile to fit that particular purpose. Then Agile can be applied successfully in all kinds of organizations without any exception. But you have to evaluate, estimate, relate, stimulate, and celebrate agilically. Because when you, you, when, if you do all those things and you are now rolling and rocking, celebrate at every milestone, celebrate your success. And then evaluate how far you have gone. Then you engage the stakeholders, bottom top and top bottom. Why I brought this is that I was working in another uh, an organization where a lot of the top managers were not uh, familiar, very familiar with Agile. So it was very difficult to work with them. So uh, that's why I had a meeting with the uh, Agile coach and suggested that uh, it's very important to create these training sessions for the, uh, those top managers. And that was done. And then uh, the relationship become, became better and we're able to produce more effectively. So that's why it has to be bottom, top, and top bottom. So communication is very important because if in order to tell or agile to suit the organization, you have to communicate your vision, mission, and passion, and of course, take action and without procrastination because if uh, you want to make that change and really go ahead, you don't want to uh, be a victim of the aim, aim game. The aim, aim game is what I call procrastination. 